Can I turn to um, the cars, as, as uh, and, and you says uh, Senator O'Sullivan was talking about? Car makers must comply with um, regulations that you're that you're about to introduce, and they must also com comply with customers' needs. Now, my understanding is that the demand for sedans, for example, a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic, is decreasing, and the demand for the the corresponding SUV, which in the, in the case of Toyota would be a RAV4 or a Honda Civic, is increasing dramatically. The, the SUVs are heavier, uh, they're more utilitarian, um, but they're preferred. How does the gut, but they chew, they'll chew more fuel and they produce more carbon dioxide, which to me is not a problem, but anyway. Um, how does, that, how does that affect the government, because the, the, the manufacturer, because they, on the one hand, have a government that says decrease the size of the car, the weight, the, the fuel, increase the fuel efficiency, but the customers say, no, do the opposite. The customers don't think in terms of carbon dioxide because they know it's wrong. Uh, Senator, I think, as I mentioned to a previous answer just before, that the manufacturers are able to make commercial decisions as to what their fleet looks like. <laughs> the standard... <laughs> the standard uh, looks at their whole fleet, and there are a range of ways that manufacturers can meet the standard, uh, including, and I think Mr Cathedge went through this before, but happy, not sure if you were here, happy he could go through that again in terms of they are able to meet, if they get credits in one year, they can hold them over to meet if they get debits in a, pre, in a following year. Uh, they can also... Uh, trade credits, but they can look at the fleet and change the fleet and make the commercial decisions in order to what they import into the country and offer consumers. So before Mr Cathers does that, perhaps you could tell me if uh, customers want uh, SUVs over sedans, will the, will the company be penalised? So I think I can point you, Senator, to Appendix A of our um, impact analysis where we set out the sales volumes of various um, types of vehicles. Um, your, your question is actually quite difficult because, as, as Ms. Pepper Smith mentioned, um, there's actually quite a lot of things that vehicle suppliers can do to improve the efficiency of their of the vehicles that sell and their fleet overall. Um, so the first thing I'll, I'll mention quickly is that there's changes to the vehicle themselves that they can make, um, so improving the aerodynamics, um, uh, changing well, the drivetrain. Excuse me for a minute. Um, I accept that. Mm. Um, but an SUV, compared to a sedan... They can make improvements on both, but the SUV will chew more fuel and is heavier. Full stop. <coughs> and, and so that's right, Senator. And um, and so one of the features of the policy is to include a, 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 a few flexibility mechanisms. And the first one is to include two targets: one target for passenger vehicles and a, and a higher target for light commercial vehicles. And the second flexibility mechanism in the in the scheme is to adjust the limit by weight. So you might have a particular a Toyota Kluger, for example, and that will have a particular mass in running order, and therefore the um, the target against for that vehicle or the f fleet of vehicles that that weight will be adjusted. Um, then the third thing is that um, uh, in any given year, a vehicle supplier might um, uh, bring in too many vehicles that are, uh, that are too polluting, um, and they've got two years after that point um, to bring their, what's called their initial emissions value down to zero. Um, so they do have some time. Thank you. Um, just looking at electric vehicles, for example, this, this uh, policy, these regulations are, are to drive to make petrol and diesel vehicles less attractive and make Electric, electric vehicles more attractive. That's clearly what's going on. But the efficiency of resources in an electric vehicle is quite uh, low because the vehicles are inherently heavier, as Senator O'Sullivan said, needing heavier brakes, more resources, heavier suspension, more resources, heavier components all through, more resources. So we're actually driving an economy to use less efficient vehicles and less efficient use of resources. That doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, what was the question, Senator? The question is why are you aware that that's happening? I think I'd, I'd probably say, um, so the purpose of the new vehicle efficiency standard is to improve the efficiency of new vehicles. Um, it's, not, it's not to drive a particular type of vehicle uh, or particular type of um, outcome, except for um, reduced emissions. That's the purpose of the policy. Um, you talk about reduced emissions. Last question. Uh, what's the, have you done any work on the life, life cycle? Uh, production of carbon dioxide from a diesel and a petrol vehicle compared to the electric vehicle. Uh, we have, Senator. And, and um, particularly this... right through the mining sector as well because of the extra uh, resources that need to be mined for an EV. Yeah. 
Um, so we have, we included some evidence in our impact analysis, which is now published on the Office of Impact Analysis website. So section 4.2.1 sets out um, a range of um, uh, different estimates that have been made. The first one is from our own Bureau of uh, Infrastructure and Transport Research Economics, which finds that while manufacturing an EV may produce more GHG emissions than an internal combustion engine, um, that is more than offset by about, after about one year if the vehicle is charged from renewably sourced electricity, i.e. home solar, and two years if charged from the grid using a mix of electricity generation sources. Um, in that section, Senator, I won't read it all out. Um, we do ha have, I think, four other sources that support the, the, the same uh, contention. There's an assumption there that, that they'll be using your renewable solar and wind. Mm. So that's a big assumption. Thank you.